every building you design is going to have a context and how you respond to that context is going to determine what that building looks and feels like. I'm a, a residential architect based in New York City with a focus in my work on classical, traditional, vernacular architecture. I work with a team of about 35 architects, designers, and support staff, and uh, we have a lot of fun. When I'm thinking about context for a project, I feel like there's really three contexts that we look at as a firm. The first, of course, is site and what, what the site of the project is. The second is history or the architectural traditions that might be at play in the project. And then the third is what I think of as memory. The site, of course, has a huge influence on the way you're going to develop a project. If a new piece of land and a new house on a piece of land, for example, is the land sloping? Is it flat? Does it have a beautiful view? Is there some natural feature that's going to impact the way you design? All these things are really key to, in, to understand in order to respond with a design that makes sense on, on that piece of land and also takes advantage of the natural qualities that are there and the reason that a client fell in love with the property in the first place. There can be aspects of a site that will have a direct impact on the way you design the house. For example, if it's on a sloping site that has to set into the hill, that probably means you're going to have to have some sort of masonry, at least on the lower level. So is that house going to be part stone and part wood, or is it going to be all stone? These things all have a direct impact on the way the house is going to look and the way you're going to develop that design. A wonderful example of a building that really nails its context, I think, is Falling Water by Frank Lloyd Wright, which sits nestled in this kind of hollow of land in a woodland with masses of rhododendron and trees, and of course built right over a waterfall. If you have never been to it, you should go. It's just a really extraordinary experience. Wright understood his context and wanted to put you right into that stream in a way that is utterly magical. When the project is a a restoration and, and sometimes that's something with a quite strong historic nature and sometimes it might even be a landmarked building or it can just be a, a pretty old house or even a house that maybe was pretty at one time but isn't so much anymore. Um, our approach is always to try to learn the language of what that house is or was and then to, to do whatever we do to that house in a way that feels seamless with the original. Books are so important to our process because it's how we really learn the language of the historic architecture that we're trying to speak in our own way now. The library here in the office is so important. In fact, it's literally the spine of the office. It runs down the whole length of the center of the space because we use it every single day, whether it's the design of moldings or the proportions of, of a door surround or proportions of a facade. All these details from the past are really important for us to understand so that we can speak that language now in a way that feels effortless and natural. Outside the property there's some sort of context and that may have some kind of architectural tradition to it. In New England there might be a the colonial architecture or colonial revival architecture that might uh, influence how you think about what the house is going to be or if it's on a farm maybe you want it to look like a farmhouse. In this house that we're working on in the Hudson Valley, the clients came to us looking for a very specific architectural tradition for their house to express, which was not about the Hudson Valley or even an American farm, but rather uh, an English country house because their context uh, was uh, years spent in England before they moved back to America. That architectural tradition suddenly became something that we interjected into this project in a way that, that we might not have otherwise. A classic English country house would have had the kitchen off to the side of the main part of the house, but we knew that the way people wanted to live today uh, is to have that kitchen front and center uh, in the house. And so we actually put it right here, just steps away from the front hall, near the main entertaining rooms of the house, so that it's much more um, in the center of life in, in the house, which is, of course, the way we like to live today. For me, what was important then is to figure out how to take that that contextual tradition from somewhere else and make it also feel at home on the land. 
The third element of context that um, I think about is, is the more mysterious one, which I call memory. So it, it brings a kind of emotional element into a design. And, and there are lots of ways that people uh, bring memory into their houses. Sometimes they'll bring to us old doorknobs from an old house and say, I want to use this, this was in my mother's house, or the furniture that they're going to bring back into the house, or a bay window because that was something that they had in the house they grew up and they loved in. To bring that into the house you're designing because then it creates that really uh, powerful emotional connection that makes a house feel like a home, not just a piece of architecture.